Blessed day everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Agios Grafe by the son of Pastor Pastors from Canada and I'm very very excited today. Today we're gonna be dealing with some topics that you haven't seen and it's gonna be very very wonderful. Very wonderful. So guys, if you are here for the first time, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get notified of new videos whenever we upload new videos. Also remember to like, share, comment and tell us of any question that you want us to tackle and we will bring a video dedicated to you. God bless you so much. Remember, before you go on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you go on, remember the purpose of the scriptures are to make you wise in salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul tells us this uh, in, in, in the book of first in the book of Romans chapter chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. And he writes also to Timothy, said, For thou hast known the holy scriptures that are able to make you wise in salvation through faith. In Jesus Christ. And remember when Christ appeared to his disciples, when he had resurrected the disciples who were on the road to Emmaus, the Bible said he expounded to them scriptures from Moses to all the prophets, all things concerning himself. The words expounded them. It's a Greek word that means to explain verse by precept by precept. That means Jesus did a Bible study with them from Moses all over from Genesis. To Malachi explaining to them the scriptures all things concerning himself so the all things concerning himself means the scriptures testify about Christ all the scriptures testify about Jesus Christ said the scriptures for in them you think you have life but they are dead things which testify about me the scriptures they speak of Christ scripture they speak of Jesus alone from Old Testament to New Testament the scriptures have been talking about Christ Jesus so the purpose of the scripture they're not to make you as in the business uh, in in utter in big in taking your far picking your favorite uh, verses memory verses not there to make the wise into salvation to understand your salvation and Paul makes a big stance he says, Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, Timothy, that are able to make you wise in salvation through Christ Jesus. So the purpose of the Scriptures are to make you wise in salvation, in faith, through Christ Jesus. That's the reason the Scriptures, they are there for you. And here on Haggis Graphy, we are determined to bring the Scriptures in the revelation of Jesus Christ, revealing and reintroducing Christ, making the believer to know who he is in Christ, what he has in Christ, and what Jesus can do through a believer. We, we are dealing with the fallacy that how to worship God in truth and in the spirit. Because if you are an average Christian, you have grown up to realize that uh, people almost time, they tell us, if you want to please God, because God is seeking for people worshiping in the spirit and the truth, we should worship God in the truth and the spirit. And they will teach you principles how to worship God in the truth and the spirit. And they will teach you ways to worship God with truth and spirit. And they will tell you why you can't worship with truth and spirit that way. And they will tell you how you should do it. They will tell you uh, when you are worshiping, going in your closet. When you are to worship in the, in the spirit, speaking in tongues. To worship in the spirit, bow down, lift your hands. To worship in the spirit, you must put worship. That worship that moves you. To worship in the spirit, you must forget everything. To worship in the spirit, they tell you all kind of nonsense things. Alright, and today we will be looking at it. What's the truth about this? In the book of John chapter 4 verse 23, we see where does the verse appear about worshiping God in truth and in spirit. Yet the time is coming and has now come where the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Now people they read this verse and they take it out of context. They say, you see, God wants people to worship Him in the truth and the spirit. The reason why God is not receiving your worship is because you are not worshiping Him in the spirit and truth. 
the reason why God does not receive your worship, he does he is deaf to hear you, is because you have a lot of sins. The reason why God he can't listen to you is because you are concerned of natural things. Oh well, when I'm listening to those kind of messages, I'm like, woo, someone should come and help me. I need some help. <laughs> If you don't read the Bible, this is how you'll be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Remember, you should be established in the knowledge of faith through salvation. So every scripture, you must look it through the lens of salvation. So whatever we are doing, we are looking scriptures, interpreting scriptures through the lens of eternal salvation. Right? That's, that's good. So Jesus here, he met a, a woman by the well. She was a Samaritan from Samaria village. And as they were talking, as they were talking, Jesus began to prophesy, said, you are this husband, make you go up. He prophesied everything. And verse 19, this is what she says. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet because I have prophesied to her. Verse 20. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you Jews claim the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Do you see the argument? The argument now that she brings on, she says our forefathers, our ancestors, worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews, you are claiming and you always claim that the place that we must worship God is in Jerusalem. 21. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, not on this mountain, not even in Jerusalem. So here, the emphasis is context. You Samaritans, 22, worship what you do not know, but we do know what we worship, for salvation is from Jews. 23, here is what now Jesus says, Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and the truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. And remember, he has already told us that a time is coming in verse 20, 21, that a time is coming when you will not worship God on this mountain or in Jerusalem. So geographical, he, that's geographical. Because underlying this, the woman said, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you just claim that we should worship in Jerusalem. Underline that, please underline that if you, if you want to understand this well. To go to 23, Jesus says, a time is coming and a time is now. When true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, underline in spirit and in the truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Underline the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. And go to 21. Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, not on this mountain, not even in Jerusalem. Underline not even on this mountain, not even in Jerusalem. So Jesus is saying, a time is coming when you shall not even worship on this mountain, neither in Jerusalem, but you shall worship in truth and in the spirit. That's what Christ is saying. And Jesus is saying, God seeks for these people. That means that time, from the time of Genesis to that time when Jesus was speaking, there was no one who was worshiping God in truth and spirit. Because God was still seeking for who should worship him in the truth and the spirit. So the emphasis, what Jesus was meaning here, he was meaning a time is coming when my people, when the true worshippers, will not worship God in a geographical location. They shall not worship God in a geographical location. They shall worship God in the spirit and in the truth. And remember that time, there was no spirit, they were not worshiping the spirit and truth. They were carnal men. That's why they, 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 they had not even the ability to understand the revelation that Christ had given them. Jesus, when he began to teach them through his teaching ministry, when he just began teaching the simple things, they wanted to stone him, they wanted to kill him, they were angry at him, they began persecuting him. And Jesus saying, if I can speak of earthly things and you do not understand them, what about the heavenly things? What Jesus was saying, if I can tell you these simple things and you do not understand, you wrestle with these things. What about the hardest things, the spiritual things? If I can tell you things of these carnal things but you don't understand them, what about the spiritual things? They, they, they watered down the gospel of Jesus. Then Jesus began to use parables. So Jesus is saying, it shall come a time when you shall not worship in a physical location but you shall worship in truth and the spirit now there it comes a problem 
Because many preachers have preached to us that worshiping the truth is doing this, doing that, not doing this. They will tell you this is how you worship and they will teach you the precepts, they will teach you the condition, they will teach you the ways, they will teach you the, the laws of worshiping the truth and the spirit. They, they will teach you steps out to get in the spirit, steps out to get in the in the spirit, steps out to, to enter the spirit, what levels of the spirit. That's all nonsense, garbage, irritless. And today I'm dealing with these two verses because Jesus' emphasis is on worshiping the truth and the spirit. So let's get the credo on in the spirit first. Let's look on the truth also. Truth and the spirit. That's my focus. Because if we don't, God is seeking for those who worship him in the truth and the spirit. That means if we don't worship God in the truth and the spirit, God will never hear us. He's, he, he, he will never, he's seeking for people who are worshiping him in the truth and the spirit. Why? How, how, how should we worship God in the truth and the spirit? Today I will tell you very simple thing, the truth. How do we worship God in the truth? Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, ex no one can go to the Father except through me. The truth is not an object. The truth is not something. The truth is a person. And Jesus is the truth. The truth is Jesus. Let it sing. Let it sing. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father except passing through me. So Jesus is saying the truth is not a past, is, is, is not an object. The truth is not something. The truth is me. So Jesus is the truth. Jesus does not give the truth. Jesus does not preach the truth. Jesus does not present the truth. He is the truth. Himself he is not presenting the truth. He is presenting himself. Jesus is the truth himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Let's go further. Let's look at the last verse. John chapter 8, verse 32. Let, uh, let's look it further. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. 32. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So Jesus says, if you listen to my teachings, you will know the truth, and the truth will set, me, it will set you free. Then let's look, what does Jesus mean? Is truth something? Let's look. Is truth this Bible? No, this Bible is not the truth. Let's go to verse 36. So if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. So Jesus says, if the Son will set you free, you'll be free indeed. You are free indeed. Oh, glory to God. If God set you free, if Christ set you free, if the Son set you free, if the truth who Jesus is himself set you free, you'll be free indeed. So we have analyzed and concluded that the truth is not an object. The truth is a person and Jesus is the truth. John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except by passing through me. So Jesus saying, I am the truth. I'm not giving you the truth. I'm not teaching the truth. I'm not preaching the truth. I'm not presenting the truth. I am not saying the truth. I'm not bringing the truth. I am the truth. Jesus did not bring a message. He is the message himself. Oh, glory to God. And Jesus says in, in John chapter 8, 32, says this, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But verse 36 says, whoever the Son sets free, he is free, free indeed. So what Jesus is meaning by verse 36? He's saying, you shall know Jesus and Jesus shall set you free. Oh, glory to God. Because when you know Jesus, you are free. The moment you received Jesus, you received the truth. The moment you received Jesus, the truth got in you. The moment you received Jesus, the truth got injected into your system. You are no longer seeking for the truth, brother and sister. You are no longer looking for the truth, brother and sister. You are no longer reading the truth, brother and sister. You are not searching out the truth, brother and sister. You already have the truth residing inside you. The full package of the truth living inside you. Oh, glory to God. I'm so excited today. So the truth is not an object, brother and sister. The truth is a person. The truth is a person. 
Oh, glory to God. Because whoever the Son set free, He is free indeed. You shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, glory to God. And the time is now when we are worshiping God in truth. So the truth is in Jesus, okay? <laughs> Oh, glory to God. So let's see now the spirit. Let's, uh, let's go to the, to the level of a spirit. <laughs> let's go to the spirit now. In worshiping God in the spirit, we have been taught by many numerous preachers, the teachers that were all worshiping the truth, worshiping the, in the spirit. It's doing this, doing this. They always attach principles, levels, conditions, many things, garbage things, how to worship God in the spirit. They will tell you now is the time to get in the spirit. They will teach you how to, to enter into the realm of the spirit, how to, to possess the spirit, how to become spiritual. They will teach you all those things. That's nonsense. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I'm so excited. Okay. Today is a very glorious day. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Let's look at the word Bible saying, You, however, you, my brothers, you, my fellow brothers, you Christians. Huh? Okay. What? is he saying <laughs> you however my brothers are not in the realm of the flesh but in the spirit you however you are not in the realm of the flesh you are in the realm of the spirit if indeed the spirit of God lives in you if indeed you have the Holy you see Paul saying he said if you have the Holy Spirit you are not in the flesh you are in the spirit you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. Ha! If you have the spirit of God in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So Paul is saying, you my fellow Christians, you my brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. You are not seeking to come out of the flesh. You are in the spirit already. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, you are in the Spirit. Ah, oh, glory to God. Now, Paul is saying, if you don't have the Spirit, you are not a child of God. <laughs> you see, Paul is using a strong emphasis on this verse. He's saying, but you, brothers, however, you are not in the realm of flesh. You are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God in you, if indeed you have the Holy Spirit, you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit already. This is not a futuristic thing. This is not an ambition. This is not a wish. This is already a statement of fact. If you are a born again, you are already in the Spirit. Ah, glory to God. And if anyone does not have the spirit, because now here Paul knew, he said he knew if he said if you have the spirit, you, if you have the Holy Spirit, you are in the spirit. He knew there were some people who were going to doubt. He had another stronger emphasis. He said if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't have the spirit, you don't belong to to to, to Jesus. He says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Christ. So if you are a Christian, then you say, oh, I don't know how to enter the Spirit. I, sh I should make time to be entering the Spirit. That's unbelief. You're an unbeliever. Get born again, my friend. Oh, God, we come before your presence. Get born again. I long to stay in your presence. Get born again, my friend. Oh, I want to walk in the newness of the Spirit. Get born again. A believer, a born again, is not praying to get in the Spirit. A believer, a born again, is not praying to enter in the Spirit. A believer is not longing for the presence. A believer is born in the presence. Because that moment you receive the Christ, you receive the headquarters. The Bible says, for Christ is the headquarters of the Godhead. So Christ is the headquarters of the Godhead. So when Christ got a new the headquarters of God got in you. The presence of God lives inside you. You are no longer seeking for the presence. You are already in the presence. You are no longer seeking for the truth. You are already in it. Ah, glory to God. You are not seeking to enter the spirit. You are already in the spirit. You are already in the spirit? Yes. Ah, if you have the spirit, if you don't, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't have the spirit of God, you are not of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what he just said. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you are not of Christ. <laughs> if you have the spirit of Christ, you are in the spirit. You are not going to be in the spirit. You are not praying to enter the spirit. Ah, oh, glory to God. You are already in the spirit. Hallelujah. So do you see that? 
We have seen the truth is Jesus. That moment when you received Jesus, you received the truth. Haya, haya, haya. Because John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to me except, no man can go to the Father except through me. And in John chapter 8, 32 says, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Then John chapter 8 verse 36 saying, Whoever the Son sets free, he is free, free indeed. Free indeed. Oh my God, he's free indeed. So you see that, so we've established that the truth is not an object. The truth is a person. And we've seen what about in the spirit, worshiping the spirit. Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, says this, but you, my brothers, you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are in the, in the, in the spirit. And he has an emphasis there. He says, because every man who doesn't have the spirit is not of Christ. So if you are born again, you are already in the spirit. So that moment when you received Christ, you received the truth. That moment when you received Christ, the presence of God got in you. You are no longer, we are no longer seeking God. We are no longer seeking to enter into the presence. We are no longer looking for the presence. We are no longer longing to be in the presence. We are no longer longing to be where he is. We are already where he is as Jesus is in heaven. So are we here on earth. So Jesus lives in us. Who are we? We are in the spirit. We have the truth. We are no longer seeking for the truth. So what does Jesus mean? when he says you shall worship me in truth and spirit Jesus was saying this remember that this what Jesus says for God is seeking for such why who are the people God is seeking and we go to first Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 we see what God desire first Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 the Bible says this is good and it pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of Christ. So Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. He says, this is good and pleasing to God our Savior. His desire is for every man to be saved and to come to the knowledge of Christ. And remember, God is seeking for such, meaning there was nobody at that time who was worshipping the truth and the spirit because God was still seeking for them. God is not, now good news, God is not seeking for them because they are already there. What so did Jesus mean for God seeking for people who are worshiping, who we worship him in the truth and the spirit? What Christ was meaning, he was meaning this, was saying this, that God's desire is for you guys to be born again. Jesus, what he was meaning was saying, a time is come and the time is here when true worshippers will worship him in the truth and the spirit. What is meaning a time is coming and time is here when people will get born again, when true worshippers will be born again worshippers. What Jesus was saying was saying the desire of God is, is for every man to be born again. Jesus, what was meaning, he was meaning this, that you must be born again. The message was saying was saying that God's desire is for every man to be saved. So what Jesus was meaning was salvation. Was meaning God is looking for these people who worship in truth and the spirit and these people worship in the truth and the spirit that the people who are born again. They are the people who are already justified, sanctified, born again, saved by believing unto Jesus Christ. So you don't need to do anything because you are already in the spirit. You don't need to do anything. As long as you are born again, you are in the spirit. When I'm eating, I'm in the spirit. When I'm playing, I'm in the spirit. When I'm sleeping, I'm in the spirit. When I'm walking, I'm in the spirit. I'm always in the spirit. I'm not seeking the presence of God. I'm in the presence of God always. Now to summarize, you know we have been dealing with this topic that debunking the worship myth that uh, when Jesus says that you shall worship, that a time shall come when people will worship me in truth and the spirit. And we talked this, that the underlying that verse in spirit and in truth. And now we looked at this, the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 verse 19, the Samaritan woman says, I perceive that you are a prophet. But our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you just claim that the place of worship is in Jerusalem. Then God, Jesus replied in verse 20. He says, a time is coming, my lady, that true worshippers will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. And he says this, 
they shall worship in the truth and in the spirit. That's what Jesus was saying in verse 23. That a time is coming and the time is already here. When true worshipers will worship in truth and the spirit. Now listen this as you know what we have been talking about already. I'm summarizing for you. That worshiping the truth is not a, a, a futuristic thing right now. Because listen to this, listen to this. John chapter 14 verse 6 Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus saying the truth is not an object. The truth is not something. The truth is a person. The truth is Jesus. So Jesus saying, I am the truth. I am not giving you the truth. I am not showing you the truth. I am not leading you to the truth. I am not bringing you out to the truth. I am not bringing you the truth. I am the truth. Jesus is not a messenger. He is the message himself. He is the message himself. Hallelujah. He is the message himself. That's what Jesus is meaning. And we see also in John chapter 8 verse 32. He says, you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. And the John chapter 8 verse 36 says this. Whoever the Son sets free, he is free indeed. He is free indeed. He is free indeed. He is free indeed. You shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Whoever the Son sets free, he is free indeed. What does this mean, brother and sister? This means that Jesus was saying this. Whoever the Son will set free, he is free indeed. Whoever Jesus has set free, he is free indeed. So you shall know Jesus, and Jesus shall set you free. So that moment when you received and believed Jesus Christ, you received the truth. You are no longer seeking for the truth. You already have the truth. And worship in the Spirit now. That's where we go. We go in Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Paul saying, but you my brothers, you are not in the flesh. You are not in the realm of the physical. You are not in the realm of the flesh. You are in the realm of the spirit if you have the Holy Ghost so if you have the Holy Ghost it's a sign that when you receive the Holy Spirit you cease it to be in the flesh when you receive the Holy Spirit you are no longer in the flesh you are now in the spirit and the angel of us from that says if you don't have the spirit you are not of Christ so if you don't have the spirit you are not in the spirit so what Paul is meaning is meaning that when that moment when you're born again that moment when you received Jesus Christ, that moment when you were saved, you ceased to be in the flesh. You were in the spirit. So I'm in the spirit. Right now I'm in the spirit. When I'm walking, I'm in the spirit. When I'm sp- sleeping, I'm in the spirit. So it's not a futuristic event. It's a now short thing. We are no longer praying to be in the spirit. We are already in the spirit. We are no longer praying to worship God in truth and the spirit. We are already there. We are already there. We are already there. Because the truth is not an object. The truth is a person. When you receive Jesus, you receive the truth. When you receive Jesus, you cease it to be in the physical. You, you become in the, in the spirit. So, whenever you hear that it's time to get in the spirit, laugh. Get in the spirit. Oh, wow. Get in the spirit. Whenever you hear, once you become in the truth and the spirit, tell them, I am already alive. I am already in the spirit. So that the, what Jesus was saying was saying God is seeking for people who will be born again because in Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 he says the desire of God is that every man might be saved and come to the knowledge of Christ and Jesus in, May, in John chapter 4 verse 23 he's saying God is seeking for these people who will worship him through the spirit Jesus was not meaning people who will begin who will worship no 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 he was meaning God is seeking for people who will be born again what Jesus was meaning he was talking about salvation he was saying you shall be saved when you receive salvation you shall worship in the truth and the spirit we are worshiping oh glory to God. We are worshiping already in the spirit. We are already in the spirit. We are not praying to be in the spirit. We are already in the spirit. We are not praying to worship in the truth. We already have the truth. Who is Jesus? The absolute truth. The absolute truth. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. See you then. Thank you guys for listening to this message. I hope you were blessed by this. And if you are blessed by this, remember to share it to someone. Remember to share it to someone. Remember, the message of, of the Bible is a salvation. Is salvation. 
the whole essence of the scripture as for salvation. Because everything in the Bible it revolves around salvation. Let me surprise, surprise you. When they were canonizing our Bible, putting inside the books and then removing some books, they did this. Whenever they saw a prophet spoke about Jesus, they put him inside. But if a prophet did not speak about Jesus, they faced out the book. So they were taking the book based on the prophecies that were spoken with Jesus. So all these prophets who entered here, these are the prophets who prophesied about Christ, who spoke about Christ, they were put inside. So that, 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 that's good to know that those scriptures in this Bible, they are for salvation. They speak for salvation only. Nothing else, nothing business, nothing being wise. So guys, bless you so much. I love you so much. Remember, stay in the good news and stay in sound doctrine and God bless you so much.